Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Gut and Gone, with unfinished business awaiting successor outgoing Tasmanian Premier Peter Gutton wanted to leave his mark. He set the wheels in motion on a series of issues that could significantly change the state, including well overdue steps toward treaty with the Aboriginal community and a $750 million Hobart Stadium that would pave the way for a Tasmanian AFL team. Other big reforms took a little more prodding. The closure of the Ashley Youth Detention Centre, docked by decades of rape claims by former detainees, had long been recommended and was announced only after a worker blew the whistle on alleged workplace sexual harassment. A commission of inquiry into child sex abuse came after months of damaging and horrific revelations about Ashley, the state's public schools and the hospital system. But Mr Gutton can rightly lay claim to being the first leader of the state to take action in such important spaces. With the pressures of the pandemic, and the dissolution of Parliament for the early state election, legislative change was a little thinner on the ground. Space to play or pause, M to mute, left and right arrows to seek, up and down arrows for volume. Reforms to political donation laws, promised under the former Premier Will Hodgman, are yet to materialise, while contentious legislation locking in tax breaks for poker machines operated by casino giant Federal Group did make it through the Parliament. Whoever next leads the state, likely current Deputy Premier Jeremy Rockliffe, will have to do the hard yards to actually deliver on Mr Gutton's many big promises. They will also have to manage a great loss of talent, smarts and parliamentary experience when he formally tenders his resignation, and inherit a host of long-running, and in some cases, worsening, issues in health, housing and education. All that without a skilled treasurer at the helm and freshly minted MPs in Lara Alexander and whoever is elected to base. As well, the new Premier can take heed from Mr Gutton's mistakes. Mr Gutton appeared big on ideas but often fell short on consultation. He effectively abolished the Department of Communities, shifting responsibility for spiky areas like child protection to the Education Department, reportedly without alerting the Secretary or relevant unions. Huge reforms were made to Taz TAFE, bizarrely without bringing the teachers' union into the tent. Ashley's closure was decided without a meeting of the cabinet. He gained a reputation among colleagues as a micromanager and a lone wolf, consulting mostly with trusted advisor and chief of staff Andrew Finch. This was evident as recently as last week when Mr Gutton revealed his office had negotiated a $250,000 grant for the Jack Jumpers despite having a sports minister on deck. Mr Gutton's strong stance on the borders won him praise for the first 18 months of the pandemic and he will be long remembered for his decisive, firm leadership on COVID-19. But with cases climbing, and outside a state of emergency, the shine was starting to wear off. When Will Hodgman left the state's parliament a mere two years ago political observers struggled to see how anyone could fill his shoes. But the last 48 hours show nothing can be taken for granted in politics. Want more Tasmanian news? Set the ABC News website or the app to Tasmania Top Stories from either the homepage or the settings menu in the app to continue getting the same national news but with a sprinkle of more relevant state stories. Here is a taste of the latest stories from Tasmania, posted four hours ago, updated one hour ago.